Hello everybody, my name is Greg Moore. This is a video in the COVID year 2020 about parallel circuits. Uh, I'll be going through the PowerPoint slides. I'll be identifying some problem areas. I'll be doing some solutions in a notepad and the whole presentation should take around about 30 minutes. Okay, let's get on with the show. All right, this is done for TAFE, New South Wales. You can see here on the PowerPoints. And uh, there's certainly a lot to know about parallel circuits. And probably it's fair to say at this point, I can't possibly cover everything in the one PowerPoint. So this is a introductory PowerPoint. And uh, there's a second PowerPoint that uh, adds value to this one. Um, we do use uh, often in the class uh, this textbook by Peter Phillips, Electrical Principles, and uh, that's an earlier version, a second edition. I think it's currently up to the fourth edition, uh, and they are the pages that uh, relate to parallel DC circuits. All right, question one here, point one, what's a parallel circuit? Well, it's a circuit in which components are connected so as to allow more than one path for current to flow. Um, these switches are connected in parallel, but the lamp is connected in series. And I think we encounter a little bit of a problem in the slide because this set of slides uses like partial disclosure and uh, sequential disclosure. And it says a switch and a lamp in parallel. The switch and the lamp are not in parallel. The switches are in parallel and the lamp is in series. So we've hardly even started the PowerPoint presentation and there's already a problem. Why didn't I fix it on the slide? Because I think it's a very pertinent point of interest and we're going to go and have a little bit of an exploration about that. So we'll go into um, good notes and I'll just make that a little bit bigger and we'll draw this on the screen and I'll draw you what uh, two switches in parallel and a lamp in parallel would look like. So if we had a, uh, a voltage source here, a battery, and uh, we come along here and we've got switch number one. We've got switch number two. These are connected in parallel. Top of the, the top switch left hand side to the bottom switch left hand side, top switch right hand side to the bottom switch right hand side. Just like a pair of train tracks, they're connected in parallel. And if there was a lamp connected in parallel, well, guess what? The lamp would have to go across here like this as well. That would be a set of switches with a lamp in parallel and you look at that and you think well geez where would I ever use a circuit like that now I'm going to put a limiting a current limiting resistor in here and I'm going to complete the circuit by connecting this up and then with the switches both open this switch is currently open and the other switch is also ditto it's open and the lamp will glow. We'll have the lamp lighting up. But, let's get a nice pen there. The lamp will glow. But, if we close these switches, look what happens. I close this switch. I close, well, I, I, in fact, I don't need to close both switches. As soon as I close either one of those switches because they're parallel connected switches. As soon as I close that switch, the current which is flowing along here from the battery and going through the circuit will come along. I've got resistance in the lamp. I've got no resistance in a closed switch. So all of a sudden this is now closed. The current flows through the closed switch, comes down here, goes through our series resistor to limit the amount of current flowing in the circuit and not damage the battery or the wires. And uh, the circuit there is complete, but the lamp is not glowing. The lamp can't glow. If you close either switch in a parallel switch 
and lamp connected situation, the lamp can't glow. If we go back to our uh, PowerPoint and switch and lamp in parallel, well, like I said, that's, that's a bit of a mistake that's been made in this PowerPoint. The switches are in parallel. If I close the top switch, the lamp can glow. If I close the bottom switch, the lamp can glow. But with both switches open, the lamp cannot glow. Now, what I had there before uh, in, in GoodNotes, um, if you were to do an electronic subject and go ahead and do digital circuitry, that, that's a very basic uh, construct for a digital circuit. But that's another lesson. So, back to this. Right. Now, this is correct. I've got three lamps connected in parallel, like I said, a train track. And I've got a switch in series. We close the switch and the lamps all turn on together. Each lamp will have the same voltage as the supply voltage. I open the switch, all three lamps go off. Parallel connected resistors. Lamps are resistors. These are resistors that don't glow, so they are proper resistors. And uh, R1, R2, R3, if I was to close the switch, current will flow through each of those resistors. How much current? The same current? No, not necessarily. It depends on the value of each resistor. They'll have the same voltage across. They'll have identical voltages across each resistor, just like the lamps. But if they are different value resistances, they'll have different values of currents, according to Ohm's law, flowing down through each resistor. So the supply voltage, Vt, V total is applied directly across each resistor. Therefore, the basic rule relating to voltages in parallel circuit states each branch voltage in a parallel circuit is equal to the supply voltage. Based on the arrangement shown in that previous figure too, the voltages in various parts of a parallel circuit may be expressed mathematically as the total voltage is the same as V1, is the same as V2, is the same as V3. All right, there we have there V1, the voltage across R1, voltage across R2, voltage across R3. All of the resistors share exactly the same voltage in a parallel circuit. And with one switch in series, we turn that one switch on, we close that switch, allowing current to flow. All of the resistors uh, get the voltage delivered across them, and they have current flowing through them, but not necessarily the same current. All right. The currents that flow in a parallel circuit are known as the supply current and the branch currents. So once I've got a voltage source across the circuit, um, the circuit forms a main current coming down through here. And then these are branch currents, branch current one, branch current two, branch current three. So there's R1 will have branch current one, R2 branch current two, and R3 branch current three. And uh, by using Ohm's law, we can show that I1, current 1, is going to be equal to Vt over R1. All right, so the currents are all dependent on the value of the resistances. If they're the same value resistors, they have the same current. But if they're different value resistors, different currents. The smallest resistor offers the smallest resistance to the flow of current. Therefore, he will have the most current going through him. If that was the largest value of resistor there, he would have the smallest current going through him. If each of the branch currents are known, then the supply current can be determined. Therefore, the basic rule relating to currents in a parallel circuit is the supply current in a parallel circuit is equal to the sum of the branch currents. Mathematically, this statement is written as the total current is equal to I1 plus I2 plus I3 etc etc in that previous circuit we had three branches so uh, the sum of the three branch currents has to add up to the supply current okay the branch current through r1 through r2 through r3 relationship between currents in parallel circuit is expressed by kirchhoff's current law which states the sum of all the currents entering a junction equals the sum of the currents leaving the junction okay so that's kirchhoff's current law Example one. So let's put some things into practice here. For the circuit shown in figure three, determine the voltage across each resistor. 
Okay. Um, well, it's a parallel connected circuit. We have the supply voltage connected in parallel with three different resistors. They're all different value resistors, but they all receive the same amount of voltage across them. So um, A, simple, the, the supply voltage Vs, or if you like Vt, V supply or V total is equal to V1 is equal to V2 is equal to V3, 100 volts. So VR1 is 100 volts, VR2 with a multimeter between here and here, measuring voltage, is 100 volts, and a voltmeter, of course, across here, measuring 100 volts. Um, the current in each branch, well, you know, we have to use Ohm's law here, and we have to know that we've got 100 volts across a 10 ohm resistor, so therefore I1 equals V on R, and it's the supply voltage divided by the 10 ohms. So there's 10 amperes of current traveling down through the first resistor. And we would draw that neatly as uh, an arrow coming down there, conventional current path, 10 amps flowing down through that resistor. Um, the second resistor has a second current, and that can be solved as being, again, 100 volts across the resistor, 20 ohms, so 100 divided by 20 to get 5 amps across that, uh, going through that resistor. Important to say going through. Currents go through, voltages are developed across. Um, Resistor 3 has 100 volts across it, and he will also have a current going down through him, and that will be equal to uh, I equals V on R, so it would be the 100 volts divided by the 25 ohms, and of course that gives 4 amps. At this point in the slide, can you work out what the total supply current might be? If we've got 10 amps plus 5 amps plus 4 amps, and Kirchhoff's current law says that the... Uh, Total current entering a node will be equal to all of the currents leaving that node. So uh, if I've got the 19 amps flowing out, I must therefore have 19 amps of total supply current flowing in. And there it is there, C. 19 amps, 10 plus 5 plus 4 is, <clears throat> pardon me, the COVID cough, 19 amps. And there's the 19 amps, and they all add up nicely. Okay, And of course, if 19 amps is flowing in, 19 amps is flowing back out. So it would not matter if you put your uh, uh, meter there, your current meter, broke the circuit, put a current meter there, you'll measure 19 amps. Break the circuit, put it there, you'll measure 19 amps. Break the circuit there, you'll measure... No, you won't measure 19 amps. If you break the circuit there, how much will you measure? Will it be 19 coming into this node? This is a node here. This is a node here. 19 comes into this node. 10 leaves that node, and of course, 9 is flowing out. There's 5 plus 4. So if I broke the circuit there and put a current meter, I'd get 9 amps there. If I broke the circuit and put a current meter there, I'd get 4 amps there. Hope you're starting to get the idea. All right, next slide. Equivalent resistance of a parallel circuit. All right, a little bit of maths ahead of us here. Um, where we've got uh, the total current flowing in and the total current going through the different resistors, we have to be able to maybe work out the total resistance or the equivalent resistance of the entire circuit to work out the total current flowing in. So there's R1, R2, R3. R equivalent, REQ, you hear me say this a lot through the PowerPoint presentation, REQ is equal to VS or VT, V supply or V total, divided by the total current. Providing we know the current and providing we know the voltage, uh, we can work out the total resistance there. Uh, simple Ohm's law. As circuit current is equal to the sum of the branch currents, IT is equal to I1 plus I2 plus I3, applying Ohm's law to each current. We get IT, we just saw on the previous page, is going to be equal to the supply voltage divided by the total resistance, I equals V on R. I1, I equals V on R again, but in this case, an independent current branch. So I1 is the voltage across that R1 resistor, VR1 divided by R1, I2, VR2 divided by R2, I3, VR3 divided by R3, and it just so happens that the voltage across resistor 1, resistor 2, resistor 3 
are all exactly the same. They're the same as VT. So as the supply voltage is equal, VT, 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 we can get rid of those VTs. We can replace them by one. And this is a lovely way of showing this sum, um, sum of the reciprocals to get the uh, equivalent resistance. 1 on RT, done mathematically here, equals 1 on R1 plus 1 on R2 plus 1 on R3. Inverting both sides of the equation, and we get REQ equals 1 on 1 on R1 plus 1 on R2 plus 1 on R3. Now, another way of expressing this is to say that this is the sum of the conductances. And we did cover conductance G in a previous lesson. And the conductance is the reciprocal of a resistance. And the total conductance in a circuit is the sum of conductance 1 plus conductance 2 plus conductance 3. And then to convert from conductance back into resistance, 1 on G equals R. So um, some textbooks, and especially when I teach this to some higher classes, will say it's the sum of the conductances. But either way, people say it's the sum of the reciprocals, sum of conductances, it, it's all good. And it's not the only way to do it. I'm going to show you an alternate way that we can do this, but we can do it in chunks, just using two resistors at a time. Okay. Therefore, the basic rule relating to the equivalent resistance for parallel circuit states the equivalent resistance for parallel circuit is equal to the reciprocal of the sum of the reciprocals, sum of the conductances, okay, and then converting it back into resistance again, of the individual branch resistances. Note the equivalent resistance of a number of resistors connected in parallel is always less than the individual resistance values. So if I had um, three resistors, 5 ohms, 10 ohms, and 20 ohms, all in parallel, and I run the maths on that, and I work it out, and I get a number larger than 5, I should know straight away I've made a mistake. Because the, the rule is that it's always got to be lower resistance. The net resistance, the REQ of the whole circuit, has to be lower than the smallest resistor in that parallel branch. All right. Here, let's do some calculations. Determine the equivalent resistance of the parallel circuit shown in Figure 5. Well, uh, we can work this out a few ways. Um, the REQ, we can go 1 on 10 plus 1 on 20 plus 1 on 25 equals answer, 1 on the answer, and, uh, and, and then we can do it that way. Or we can work out um, the resistance based on the voltage and the current, because in this case, I do have a, a total current. So REQ, working with the current, total current, it'll be 100 volts divided by 19 amps to give 5.26 ohms. All right, and then of course, going into it using some maths, and if we didn't know that current or we didn't know the voltage and we just had a bare bones circuit and someone says, geez, I've got these three resistors in parallel, what's my total resistance going to be? Well, then of course, it, it's the sum of the reciprocals, so I need to get uh, one on 10, plus 1 on 20, plus 1 on 25. Now, at this point, I'm going to take a departure from this slide. Same answer obtained two different ways. All right, I'm going to come out of that slide, and I'm going to do some cutting. And we'll just, come on, we'll just snip that out. Okay. And then we'll take that down and we'll put that into good notes. And we'll run some maths on that. Come on, in you go. The lovely beach ball. The beach ball of death. Look at that. It doesn't like uh, running Camtasia and running this at the same time. Oh, you horrible, rotten thing. All right, so we've got 10 ohms, 20 ohms, and 25 ohms. So... And we saw on the previous slide, it'd be 1 on 10, add 1 on 20, add 1 on 25, equals 1 on R total. Can we make this a bit bigger? Yes, we can. There we go. Okay, okay. very good. 
one on our total. Now, in your calculator, what you would do with this, if you've got a Casio calculator, which I guess most of you do have, um, it would be 10 um, followed by x to the minus 1, which is reciprocal, add 20 x to the minus 1, add 25, followed by the button x to the minus 1, equals, and then you're going to get your answer. Sure, we don't need that box there, do we? Equals answer, and then one final push of the button, x to the minus 1. And I'm not sure if there's an equals after that or not. Can't remember. I've been using a, uh, a sharp calculator for the last couple of days, so um, sharp calculator is not as friendly as the Casio anyway. I know that. So this is how you do it on most um, calculators. I know with the sharp, it's a second function to get into the reciprocal, which is a bit of a pain. Casio is much more friendly to do that. And, and if you do that, you're going to come up with the uh, answer. And of course, we know that the final answer must be less than 10 ohms because 10 ohms was the lowest resistance. We had 10 plus 20 plus 25 all in parallel. So the final um, answer has to be smaller than the smallest resistor which is um, 10 ohms. Now, that's not the only way to do it. So I'm going to put on the side here, there are two ways. There are, well, actually, there's three ways, but we'll keep it simple. There's two ways to, uh, to solve this. You can use the sum of the conductances conductances or you can use product over sum but you've got to do things in chunks and I do like product over sum because you don't need a calculator for a lot of the things that you do with product over sum so uh, using product over sum it would be a case of um, case one it would be 10 ohms in parallel with 20 ohms and um, product means that we multiply them and sum means that we add them. So for case one it would be um, 10 times 20 divided by 10 add 20 so that's going to be equal to 200 divided by 30 and 200 divided by 30 is about, mm, well, 7 times 30 be 210. So say to guess, look, I'm just going to guesstimate that. Um, just, just, just guesstimate it there. And um, that's going to be about 6.5. Okay, that's just for two resistors though, only two. Now, because there were three resistors in the group, I have to take that REQ1, so two, We'll take REQ1 in parallel with that final resistor was 25 ohms. So there's 25 ohms, the last resistor there. So that's going to be equal to 6.5 ohms in parallel with 25 ohms. So that means that it's going to be um, 6 point um, six point five times twenty five over over uh, six point five add twenty five all right, 6.5 and 25 I'm just going to call that 31 so again I'm going to approximate this so it's going to be something divided by 31. And 6.5 times 25, 6 20s are 120. 6 times 25 is 150. Is it? 
six. Yeah, 150, that's 150 and a half, say about 160. I'm going to approximate it to about 160 divided by uh, 30. 160 divided by 30 is going to be about, um, what's that, 3, 5, 50, about 5 point something. 5 30s goes into 150 uh, nicely. So, yeah, about, I'm going to say about 5.1. 5.1 ohms okay remember it had to be lower than 6.5 ohms and the whole thing started at 10 ohms 10 ohms 20 ohms 25 ohms and 5.1 ohms so at this point um, and I hope that you've done it with your calculators anyway I'm going to grab the calculator I'm going to do this here 10 20 25 uh, and get an exact answer and just see what I get so 10 and on this sharp it's a bit of a horrible thing to work with but anyway 10 minus 1 add 20 shift function minus 1 equals that shift to the minus 1 equals 5.62 5.26 rather ah the correct answer the proper answer equals 5.26 ohms. So look at that. I, I wasn't out by much. I had 5.1 ohms, 5.26 ohms. All right. So that was just an estimation. Estimate. And I, I can't do an estimate if I only know this way of doing it. If I know the sum of the reciprocals, I can say, oh, it's going to be less than 10, but I... I I could probably take a stab in the dark and say it's about 6 ohms, but by using product over sum and doing two chunks, 10 in parallel with 20, and then um, the answer from that in parallel with the final 25, and I come up with 5.1 at an estimate without even using the calculator. I didn't even use the calculator. I could have used the calculator and I would have got it exact, but just doing it in my head, 5.1 ohms, proper answer using the calculator 5.26 ohms. So there you go. There's more than one way to uh, attack this type, of, this type of problem. Okay, let's go back to our PowerPoint. So we finished that slide, and we're into slide 13. And let's go play again. All right. When only two resistors are connected in parallel, the equivalent circuit resistance can be determined using the equation. There we go. REQ, product over sum. Determine the equivalent resistance of two parallel connected resistors having the values of 47 and 82. We know how to do this. 47 times 82 divided by the sum of 47 at 82. 29.88. That one would be a little bit harder to do in your head, but I, I don't think impossible. 130 into 3,800, uh, certainly not impossible. Even just with a bit of paper, you could, you could work that out in a couple of minutes. All right, let's prove it's right. And of course, there we have the uh, sum of the conductances again, or the sum of the reciprocals, and 28.88. Um, Eight, eight. <laughs> oh, do you like that? 29.88, 28.88. Oh dear, which one's right? I think that's probably a typo there, is it? Don't you love these um, mistakes we find in PowerPoints? It's beautiful, isn't it? So it's 1 on 47. So let's see. Oh, I've got to find my Casio. 47 second function, 1 on add 82. 82 second function 1 on equals second function 1 on equals 29.8 it's a typo that's supposed to be 29.88 rounded up that, that is the correct answer 29.88 that's incorrect 29.88 is the correct answer but i don't change these powerpoints i love them as they are because it keeps me on my toes and it makes you guys think as well both answers are the same. Well, they're the same if we visualize that as being a 9 anyway. All right, in a, in a parallel circuit, all resistors have the same value. The equivalent resistance is given by R divided by N. And this is so simple. If you've got two 10-ohm resistors in parallel, the answer is simply 5 ohms. 
Four resistors, 12 ohms each are connected in parallel. Calculate the circuit resistance. It'll be um, 12 divided by 4. 12 divided by 4, you've got 3 ohms. So this really does alleviate doing all that maths because if you did this in chunks, you'd have to do three times. Otherwise, you'd have the sum of the conductances. But once you know, hey, they're all the same value, I've got four of them, it's R divided by 4 and 3 ohms. Calculate the um, supply current. Well, we've got a 10 volt supply. We've got 3 ohms. So therefore, we must have in B here, Okay, 3.33 amps of current flowing given by V on R. So simply the uh, 10 volts divided by the 3 ohms to get 3.33 amps. Power in a parallel circuit. A little bit strange to add power in these slides. Um, this happened also in the series uh, set of slides because we haven't tackled the power subject yet, but all components, resistive components in a circuit dissipate power and the power is given off as heat. So um, components can get quite seriously hot if they're underrated for the uh, total power that they're designed to dissipate. Total power taken by a parallel circuit is equal to the sum of the powers taken by each branch. So each branch has a voltage across it, it has a current going through it, and because power equals voltage times current, it also dissipates power in the way of heat. So power total is equal to the first power, power in the first branch, add the power in the second branch, add the power in the third branch. And it's given in watts. There's a few different equations for working out power. Uh, one common one is uh, V squared on R. Um, and of course, the probably the most common one to use in the electrical game is simply just um, I times V. So the voltage times the current. Okay, two resistors of 20 ohms and 10 ohms are connected in parallel to a 20 ohm supply. Calculate the equivalent circuit resistance. Okay, 20 and 10, look, you can even take a bit of a guesstimate there, or you can do it product over sum. Hey, the sum's 30, and 20 times 10 is 200. Yeah, we worked that out before, didn't we? It was about 6.5. So, how are they going to do it? There we are, product over sum, 6.67. Very close, even with a guesstimate there. Um, power dissipated by each resistor. Oh, here we are again, uh, working it out using the sum of the reciprocals, or conductances there, 6.67. It's good to uh, repeat that and get a bit of practice with it. Um, as I said, common way to work out power, uh, especially in the um, radio game, uh, which my background, uh, is V squared on R. So 20 squared divided by uh, 20 is 20 watts, because it's going to be, uh, what's that, 400 divided by 20 is 20, is it? Mm. 20 watts. And the last part, um, P2, V squared on R, 20 squared divided by 10, 40 watts. So the total power in the circuit is going to be the sum of those two branch powers. And... Um, Oh, we could have done it using current. Remember I said V times I, so we've got 20 volts across each component, and one component had one ampere going through it, one component had two amperes going through it, 20 watts, 40 watts, so they were two different ways to work out power. First way, using the um, expression V squared on R, second way using V times I. Okay. Um, and then the total power there, uh, 60 watts, the sum of the different powers in the circuit, parallel circuit, different powers, the sum of the different powers in each branch add up to uh, equal the total power dissipated by the circuit. Or we can go here using the power total again with V squared on R. We know the total resistance and we know the total supply voltage is 20 volts it says here so 20 squared divided by 6.67 total power dissipated by that circuit is 59.97 
60 watts. Um, that's obviously uh, missing some decimal places there, hence it's rounded it down a bit to 59.97. I'm sure if you put all those decimal places in, it'll work out to exactly 60 watts. Determine the branch currents I1 and I2 in the circuit of figure 7. Well, let's see what we've got here. We've got um, 15 amps and we've got 10 ohms and 33 ohms. We know that the current going down through R1 and the current going down through R2 have to add the 15 amps, but we don't know what their currents are and we can't work them out unless we do something in between. We really need to work out the total resistance I think first. Okay, so we can do it if we work out the total resistance because if we've got a total resistance and we've got a current, we can get a supply voltage that gives us the voltage across each resistor or we can go ahead and we can use what's called a current divider, a current divider. But I'm going to go a little bit through this slide and this is one textbook's approach how to do current dividers, but it's a really lousy way to use a current divider because this way is using the, to get I1, it, two points. It's complex to remember because you're remembering that you're using the opposite resistor on the top of the equation to get that first current. And the other problem in this is you can only work with two resistors. If you've got more than two resistors in the circuit, you can't use this particular method. So I'll just see where they're going with this. Using standard equations, yes, option two, the way I would have probably done it, you can come in using the uh, REQ, 7.67, and then you've got a current of 15 amperes, so you can work out that you've got 115 volts. Then you know that you've got 115 volts across 10 ohms, you've got 115 volts across 33 ohms, so then you can work out the individual branch currents. And that's what they've gone on to do here, the 115 over 10 ohms, 115 over 33 ohms, to get those two different branch currents. Um, look, I'm going, to, I'm going to go back to that slide, and I'm going to cut that slide out in total and I'm going to hope that uh, something doesn't crash on the computer this time okay we're all good with that and then we go back to our notepad and in the notepad I'll come down to a clean page and we'll paste this whole slide in there it is that's a bit better this time it's behaving itself very good Maybe the software needed warming up. Who knows? All right, now, this gives me a chance to uh, get in here and I'm going to put a big circle around this and I'm going to go, no. And I'm going to go um, alternate. Alternate. Current divider. Okay, the alternate current divider. We're going to have um, REQ over R1 times I node. And there'll be case one and case two. Case one and case two because we have two currents to work out in this particular circuit case two and the beauty with this is this works with multiple resistors so i'm just going to put a line down there and i'm going to say works with multiple resistors not just two you're not limited with this. And it just makes more sense to use this. But you do need to work out REQ to use this. So that could be a little bit of a drawback. 
However, it's never given me a problem in the past. So this is what I would go to straight away. Oops, I'll just put a new page there. Okay. All right, so REQ, we know that we've got 7.67. 7.67. Divided by, and this is going to be for I1, uh, 10 ohms. Case 2 will be 7.67. These are ohms, of course. Divided by 33 ohms. Times, and the node current here is 15 amps. Times 15 amps times and what I've done I'm simply using ratios I'm using a ratio now 7.67 of 33 times 15 7.67 of 10 times 15 and they will give me my two branch currents and uh, dive into the calculator 7.67 7.67 divided by 10 equals 0.767 times 15 equals 11.505 11.505 amps and in the second case 7.67 divided by 33 times 15 equals 3.48 3.48 six amps and of course if we add both of those currents together I add that now to 11.505 and I get 14.99 so just that was just a check to see that I've got the uh, correct answer because we know that all of the um, branch currents have to add have to add to the total current coming into the circuit. So case one, and I suppose I should write here, is uh, I1. I1 equals, and case two is I2 equals. Okay. So REQ, let's put a big box around that. That is by far the, um, the better method to uh, use for a current divider. Uh, you'll find that in some other textbooks. And uh, yeah, look, I think a lot of um, teachers teach this method first up, but students often look at it and just it just becomes complex. So, And the fact that you can only use it with a circuit with two resistors, it's a little bit um, arcane to, uh, to use. Right, let's go back to our um, PowerPoint again. What I might do with this, uh, let's see how many slides have we got to go. Oh, we're nearly finished. We're nearly finished. That's good. Because like I said, I did not time this. I did not know how long it was going to take. Okay. I think we finished that, didn't we? We pretty well killed that last slide. Example six. Yes, we did. So time to move on. Um, effect of an open circuit on a parallel circuit. Really, if I've got a circuit with um, three lamps in parallel, remember the railway track there, they're connected in parallel, and one lamp is, is taken out, or these are old lamps. I mean, traditionally, before we had LEDs, these are um, glass bulbs with tungsten wire inside, which glows white hot and gives off the light, you know? And they were called lamps. And um, the filament is the tungsten wire inside. And this particular one, maybe he burned out. The, the tungsten got tired of working and developed an open circuit. He's burned out. The open circuit would cause the circuit current to do what? In this case, I've got three branch currents. Current one, current two, current three. In this case, I've got current one. <gasps> I've got no current there because I've got no filament anymore. I've got no current, no resistance, so no current flowing. And I've got current two. So I say that the current has to decrease. The effects of an open circuit in any part of a parallel circuit is that the current is decreased. The equivalent resistance of the circuit has to be increased 
because lamps are just resistors that glow white hot. So mm, the more resistors that we have in parallel, the lower the resistance is. We remove some of those resistors out of the circuit, the resistance increases. Um, voltage across the open circuit is equal to the supply voltage. So if we measure across that lamp, we get supply. We measure even across the open circuit lamp, we still get supply. Voltage across all the other components equals the supply voltage. All the open circuit, uh, the open circuit component does not operate. So the bulb has burned out or the wire connecting to it has uh, become disconnected. That component does not operate, but the other two components operate perfectly okay. So all other components in the circuit work as normal. Okay. The effect of a short circuit in a parallel circuit. And this is the old Christmas tree situation. Um, if they are all connected in parallel and one lamp goes short circuit, the whole lot stops working. And it can be a very dangerous situation and cause a fire as well. The short circuit across lamp 2. Well, I don't know why we aren't seeing the short circuit, but there should be a short circuit drawn in there across lamp 2. So maybe somebody dropped a screwdriver into the circuit and the screwdriver went between that wire and that wire there. Right? Um, the short circuit across lamp 2 would cause the whole circuit to become short circuit, like 0 ohms resistance across those two terminals just because there's a short circuit either there or there or there or here anywhere you've got a short circuit the whole circuit becomes short circuit and the circuit current would increase to infinity it would have to have a fusible link in here that would blow a fuse and uh, stop causing a fire from the wires burning out circuit current would increase dramatically there's no resistance to the current, so something's got to give. This is why we have fuses in circuits, and the fuse would blow in that case. The effects of a short circuit in any part of a parallel circuit are the circuit current increases dramatically, the resistance of the circuit drops to zero, the voltage across the short circuit equals zero volts, because you're measuring the voltage across a, a piece of wire, it's a short circuit. The voltage across all other branches equals zero, all components in the circuit stop working. All right, I think this is the end of this um, PowerPoint series. So this is the first PowerPoint on parallel. And then I've got a special Greg Moore PowerPoint um, that follows on from this. And uh, it's indeed much longer with about 40 uh, slides and a lot of calculations uh, for students to do as well. So I think this uh, stops now with some equations. The equations here for a parallel circuit, um, the voltage is the same across each component. And the currents, every component has a different current if they're different value resistances. And all those branch currents have to add up to equal the supply current. We can use the sum of the conductances to work out REQ, uh, or we can use product over sum or if the resistors are the same value, uh, we can even use R divided by N. So for example, if you're still not understanding that, if I had two 100 ohm resistors and I put them in parallel, uh, that would just be 100 divided by two, which would be 50 ohms. If I had three 100 ohm resistors in parallel, I would go 100 divided by three, 33.3 .3 ohms. So that's really easy when you've got uh, the same value resistors in parallel. The total power in the circuit is equal to the individual branch currents added together. And like I say, we do a full lesson on power uh, down the track. So this is an introduction to power with parallel circuits. And that finishes and concludes uh, this power, first PowerPoint for parallel circuits. This has been Greg Moore for TAFE. I hope uh, that made sense and uh, I look forward to seeing you in the next adventure. Bye.